So I'm going to get your uh, advice here. As a friend, a colleague, and a, a successful business owner, I was on a, uh, it's pretty much the last call with um, an applicant before we go through the process of their background check and all that. Yep. And I've worked with the owner personally, uh, know him very well, worked with him when he had, for this gym for a while. So good business relationship. His, one of his decision makers, who is a new GM, uh, gets on the call. And this was right around maybe like three months after the Glassman thing. And her position was, Stu, I don't think we can we can do this. And the reason being is we just obviously got out of this tumultuous Greg Glassman CrossFit thing. And I listened to a video the other day or a piece of content you made, and mm. it was in this controversial light. And they ended up not we ended up not going. And we've had to have a serious conversation as a company is how to you know stew with WTF and some of the shit I say separate from that. And ultimately, the answer is you can't really you yeah. got you got to my the avatar licensee is someone who's okay with that because if you're not it's not going to be a good fit that's right but yeah I, I wanted to like just i've been i've bounced that off a lot of the people i've been talking to like in that scenario where your previous past self or your your other thing that you do they're not down with on that i mean like what, what t- just give me your feedback on no that. I, I i agree with you so like for example some people would look at Stu and what the i mean the, the, the name of it's what the fuck gym talk as a little bit controversial you're a little bit controversial. You're a little bit more in your face. I, in particular, I, I, I'm, I'm just not that guy, right? Um, and there's pros and cons to it, right? So, you know, Greg was Greg. And he just, he was who he was. And you could either love him or hate him. He never said any different. And what I, what I always found impressive about CrossFit, and, I, and I, will, I will say this to his face, they never promised you anything. anything. Yeah. And I, I thought that was really powerful. You're paying for a mark. If you get value, keep paying. If you don't, don't. But we never committed anything to you. And so I thought that was really valuable because because um, they never overcommitted and underdeliver because they never overcommitted. They never committed. I think for you, it's something you're gonna have to work on with or discuss with with where you want to go in the future. Because yes, rightfully so, especially after what happened with Greg, you are you are always gonna be linked to your gym. hundred percent. And so when you go out on your podcast and even if you're talking about COVID or law enforcement, yep. if you want to have these conversations and you know, even the way I navigate these conversations, I, I, I'm, I'm just not that controversial. Sure. And I think people who get associated with NC fit know that I've had a 10 years of track record of just not being that controversial dude. The most controversial thing we probably did was de-affiliating from CrossFit when, when, and I still don't feel right about it. Right. Yeah. Like, but we're not very controversial, but you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't be controversial, but at the same time expect people oh, not to, you know what I mean? 100%. So you just got to decide where you want to fit. She said, well, as soon as she said that, I was like, that's such an amazing question. Like I applaud you for even for having the conversation. Yeah. Cause that, that's something, you know, they would have had the zoom call with us and then, then behind closed doors, be like, I don't know about this. This might not be a good, but she had it. And we had a good open conversation. Yeah. And, and again, it's probably just not the right fit, but it's so interesting because guys like you and me who make content and sometimes, I mean, you know, you say stuff and it's just like, ah, am I ever going to regret that? Cause yeah. once it's out there, it's out there for fucking ever. Right. And, and we, we've had this conversation at nauseum all frequently because it is, it is, there is an element to this thing that's out there that uh, someone could find, but it's, it's probably just not a good fit for that person. Yeah. But I mean, I, I also, I mean, you bring up a good point because like cancel culture and, and just, you know, this stuff and stuff getting taken out of context. Right. Uh, that's why I actually like long form because if someone actually sits and listens to it, they can hear the way we're just talking yeah. about stuff and that it's not so like a 10 second social media clip where you're trying to invoke, you know, one of the challenges of social media these days is that it benefits the person that is as provocative as possible, right? That like, meaning like if you put out a post that's pretty like conservative, the algorithms don't like it. But if you put out a post where it's like, whatever, super controversial, it'll get more likes and more attention. 51% will love it. 49 will hate it. That's more. That's right. And, and, and so, you know, for me, I've chosen that although I could intentionally be more provocative or whatever, like, like more inciting, you know, uh, that's just not my personality. And so I'm choosing not to do it. But if your personality is you feel comfortable about these, then I think you just, you are who you are. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's great. Yeah. You just got, you got to, again, it's a, it's a self-awareness thing. You've got to accept it and be like, this is it. And, and it, I, I think you said it, you said it earlier when we don't want to put out our own, it would feel a little un, unauthentic. 
I think the one thing that's at least really nice when you're authentically Jason or authentically Stu, whether we're just talking like this and that red button's going on this recorder or not, it would probably sound exactly the same. Um, I remember even the first time I flew out here, I remember hitting you up on the phone. I was like, hey, by the way, I want to shoot this content, whatever. I don't know if you've ever seen my shit. It's just like, it's a little bit more controversial. I wanted to make sure not to like blind say like, oh, great. I had the fuck you guy over here. Yeah, I, like, yeah. And I remember just like giving a, give a quick little, you know, courtesy call, like that kind of scenario. And I think that's the beauty of this thing is that you can, as long as you're still authentically you, through and through, and there's not a moment where you're like, sweet, loving, overly, you're on this side, and then you come on over this side, and you're just fuck, fuck, fuck for clicks, right? right. That kind of scenario. I, I think it still plays through beautifully, and the right people find you. Yeah, because your audience gets that. Like, for example, I did a podcast with Savon, and you know he's a little bit more on the controversial side than I am, right? But that's okay, because he's consistently the way he is. Sure. And... It doesn't have to be the same way that I am. And that's the benefit of this thing, right? Like we need, you know, one of the things that I, I am worried about as society gets more social and whatever is that you're going to, we're going to, we're going to make it impossible to have constructive conversations because everybody's going to want to walk on eggshells and never say anything that's challenging the, the status quo. Now, do I think that there's a way where you could challenge concepts and ideas instead of just belittling people? For sure, right? You got to challenge a concept, but that's why we move forward as a society and long format is a great way to spark concepts and ideas in people's heads like the way you talk to Juliet and Kelly and it created an idea. But those ideas don't necessarily come as often from just Instagram 10 second yeah. clips. 